The physics of skydiving and drag are straightforward. The downward force exerted by the skydiver on the air to physically push the air out of the skydiver's way can be calculated using Newton's second law of motion. By multiplying the mass of air directly fallen through by the velocity that this static air is accelerated to. The downward force physically pushes the air out of his way, thus circulating the air that they fly through. Accelerating air downwards will indirectly displace more air around the skydiver. So, the total mass of air displaced will equal the air directly and indirectly displaced. In summary, the downward force equals the skydiver's mass at terminal velocity and the total mass of air displaced. But more on this later. In addition, the skydiver's weight is a related but separate force which is their mass times gravity. The skydiver's velocity increases until the downward force exerted on the air by the skydiver equals the skydiver's mass at terminal velocity. Due to Newton's third law of action and reaction, drag is the equal and opposite upward force on the skydiver. The standard equation for drag includes air density, velocity, surface area, and the drag coefficient. The equation for drag can be split into two parts. Critically, all these factors affect the mass of air directly displaced by the skydiver, as well as the velocity that this air is accelerated to. In addition, the mass of air directly displaced can be split between the factors that affect the density and the volume of air displaced each second. Combined, density and volume is the mass of air displaced. The drag coefficient measures how effectively the skydiver accelerates the mass of air directly fallen through to then indirectly displace more air. Critically, the drag created depends on the drag coefficient multiplied by the skydiver's velocity. The drag coefficient depends on things like the skydiver's shape and the angle of attack to the direction of travel. This is a new explanation and is extremely significant. Now the other components of drag are analyzed. In a vacuum, objects of different mass will fall at the same speed as there's no air to resist an object's descent. According to the equation for drag, drag is proportional to the square of the skydiver's velocity. For example, if the skydiver's velocity doubles, then drag quadruples. This is explained in two parts. Firstly, as velocity has doubled, the skydiver falls through twice the mass of air as before each second. 
Secondly, as the skydiver has doubled their momentum, they will hit each air molecule twice as hard as before. This will accelerate the mass of air directly fallen through to twice the velocity. In total, the combined effect of this will quadruple the downward force and thus quadruple the drag. That's it! Skydivers fall faster when descending head first. A smaller surface area facing down means that the skydiver will need to fall a greater distance each second before displacing the same mass of air as before. This results in a higher terminal velocity, but the total mass of air displaced and the drag would not change. The kinetic energy can be estimated using the standard formula half mv squared. Similarly, the power generated is simply the energy transferred each second. In conclusion, it should not be surprising that Newton's laws of motion can explain the physics of skydiving and drag. Strangely, this is not what is taught at physics or engineering schools. Thanks for listening.